know, you just have to be aware you're going to share your credit as well. Don't leave stuff lying around, you know, because there's no way for us to tell who was the original and who was the copy. Um, also, um, we will get into this. Is this something that needs to be generally discussed? Okay. Um, we are going to be using software tools extensively in the process of conducting the course. The course is a large part about tools, but we're actually going to be using them as well, partly to give you a flavor of what it's like to be using them, and partly because we want you to get accustomed to the notion that software tools can contribute to your life in many different ways, positively and negatively. Um, and in particular, in the homework, we are going to want it to be submitted digitally on the computer in text form, text or HTML. Um, we talk a little bit more about that later on, but uh, Microsoft Word documents will not be acceptable. It has got to be plain text or plain HTML. If there's diagrams, it can be some standard diagram form like GIF or JPEG or something like that. Um, and the, the homework is normally due um, the night before class, you know, um, Thursday night, beginning Friday morning, it's got to be in. Um, we'll give you more details about that in a little bit. Um, and at the bottom there, you'll see, you can see how we're adding up the, um, the grades. Um, we do want to give a midterm. Uh, we don't give as much weight to the midterm as we do to the final because the midterm is really the chance for you to get a feeling for what our exams are like. Um, and um, then by the time the final comes along, which will cover all the material in the course, there shouldn't be any surprises. You should know just how you will be preparing for it. Um, there is obviously a significant component for homework and uh, we have a little bit up there for class participation. Um, uh, we're not entirely sure how we're going to do that with this many people. Um, but if you look at that, what you'll see is these add up to more than 100%. Uh, what that, nobody's going to get more than 100%, but that allows us to have... Uh, you don't have to be perfect in absolutely all areas to get a perfect score. As I said, we want you to get good grades. We want you, we don't really care that much about grades, personally. We feel that you're here to learn, we're here to teach, and that's really the purpose of this class. Software engineering is obviously about software. And it is, generally speaking, not about individual programs. If you sit down and you write, what is the world's most famous program? Hello world, right? <laughs> Great user interface. Um, if you sit down and write a single program, you're not going to worry about software engineering. That's, I mean, maybe you should, maybe you could, but it would be sort of silly. Um, you know what you want, or maybe you don't know what you want, you can sit down and play at the keyboard and so on. Software engineering is relevant to things which we call software systems. And the question is, well, what constitutes a software system? One, it's something that solves a problem. It's something that, as I say, is more complex than a program. It's a group of programs, a group of entities not too clear whether some of these things should really be called programs, um, databases, um, scripts of various sorts, um, all sorts of things that can go into being a software system. Um, it exists in some context which you can identify of um, a relationship to the hardware, the computer that it's running on. Um, normally it will have a relationship to other software. Um, 
frequently it will have a relationship to people. Now, as I stand here and say these things, I have enough experience to know there's exceptions to every single one of them. Um, and um, you will see some of those as we go through this because we don't want to think of a software system as being only a bank's accounting system or something like that. You know, a software system might also be the software that controls a traffic light down the street um, or a computer game. It doesn't have to be, quote, serious. You know, it can be anything. Um, a software system typically has some sort of economic consequences and the reason why I say that um, is because one of the motivations for software engineering has to do with money. The reason why, uh, one of the major reasons why software engineering has become an important topic is because people are very concerned with the cost of software. Software is a very, very expensive proposition. And if you're working in the software profession, you will no doubt feel that you're not being paid anywhere nearly enough and your customers will think you're being paid far too much. Um, and you're going to think you don't have nearly enough time to do your work and they're going to think, why is this taking so long? Um, and software engineering will allow you to define some of those things. Um, now, economic consequences, of course, are not just money. Um, it says up here, life and death. What does life and death mean? Let's assume you're going to the hospital because you need to have your lung replaced. And you are suddenly discovering that you're being monitored by some piece of equipment which has obviously software inside of it. And about every hour you suddenly notice this thing is rebooting. Maybe because it's running Microsoft Windows or something like that. How comfortable do you feel about that stuff? Knowing that that is what's going to call the doctor in case you have a, you know, failing in your health. So, there are consequences to software. You look like you're about to say something. No? Okay. Um, software systems are usually involve multiple people. And many of the things, maybe most of the things we're going to talk about in this course are related to the fact that there are many people involved. That um, we have to be able to track down who did what when. We have to figure out um, uh, who is responsible for various different things, where changes that need to happen need to get applied, um, how long it's going to take us to do something given the people we have available and so on. Um, and the other thing about a software system is that it tends to get utilized uh, over an extended period of time. It has a lifetime, we call it. It goes through a process of birth, living, death, rebirth. I'm sounding Indian here. Uh, it, it, it goes through many, many lives. Um, that is, in a sense the background for what this course is about. Then we come down to the question of, well, if that's what a software system, then what is software engineering? What is any kind of engineering? Why do we care? I mean, we know how to write programs. We can write them in C or Java or Tickle, or whatever your choice of language is. Um, what is the difference between writing a program and software engineering? Uh, from what I understand of, of the courses you people have had at this point, you've been primarily working with software. Okay. And as I said, software has become the, main, the economic mainstay of much of the world. And in so doing, it's become very clear that there are a lot of problems with the process of developing software. 